Friends Podcast. And here we are once again. It's August the 26th, 2019. This is episode 11. This is Clyde J. Kell, and I'm here with Constance and Diane Hunt for our weekly Otters Friends Podcast. Hello, Constance. Hello, Diane. Hi, everyone. This is Diane Hunt from Diane Hunt Studio. Hello, everybody. This is Constance Brosnan from City Brosnan and Jewelry Designs. And I'm your host, Clyde J. Kale. And this week, we're going to talk a little bit about the Renaissance. I recommend a video that, uh, that is landmark in uh, art history. And the reason why I selected that was our discussion from last week where Steve Houston was uh, talking about uh, artists that you should uh, attempt to uh, create your work to leave something for the viewers. You know, don't close the door. Create a combination of uh, a composition with color and and form so that uh, the viewers can... uh, make up their own mind as to what the meaning of the art, you know, let the art speak to them. And that's, that technique or that uh, style really came about during the Renaissance, which is what made the Renaissance uh, unique. And I think our current time is a bit of a new Renaissance, especially for artists and everything. Uh, Diane, you got any comments on that or you want to add? Well, the the Renaissance period is probably one of my favorite periods in history because um, so many new ideas were coming out and the artists weren't locked into doing one type of art. They were um, multifaceted. A lot of them did a lot of different kinds of art, um, painting and drawing and sculpture and, you know, just all, all different kinds of things. And they excelled at all of it. It's like they, the because of the stimulation, I guess, of all the different um, materials and stuff they were working with, and the patrons that they had that helped um, facilitate that, they were able to do a lot of great work at that during that period of time, and really made a lot of advancements there that we're still using today. So it's pretty kind of it's really kind of cool that you think- know hundreds of years later we're still using this a lot of the same techniques. A lot of, exactly. However, one thing is, is really wonderful. We don't have to make our own paint. They had to make their own paint back then. <laughs> well, they usually had studio assistants that did that, but a lot of them did do their own. I've done, I've made my own at, at different points in time, but. They did have to make it a lot of work. <laughs> <laughs> it is nice to be able to just buy things and not have to grind uh, pigments and stuff. But. Exactly. Constance, what about you? What, what, what are your thoughts on that? Yeah. yeah, they they had it rough back then, I mean, as far as having to make everything. But they did have uh, churches and, and, and uh, who, who uh, were just funded them. And, and nowadays you have to fund yourself and <laughs> so it's a lot harder now to to make a go of it as an artist well, something new- that, I, that i also noticed uh during that period of course that of course society in general you know several hundred years ago was very structured was very uh you know you had your peasants and then you had your upper class and you had your rich you know the majority of the artists, at least the artists that we know about, came from the upper class and the elites. And, of course, they were funded by, you know, the church because art was predominantly considered 
to be a way of expressing religious beliefs because it for the the paintings were were very all you know the religious category and they were designed you know to inspire one the the people who entered the churches and saw them you know so in that sense unlike today today it is wide open i really truly believe that it is a new renaissance for artists today because we have no gatekeepers there is no class structure there is an artificial structure we have our elites we have our you know our galleries if you don't belong to this particular group of folks or or that particular group it's hard to advance but you can still as an individual artist, regardless of your economic background, regardless of your your ethnic background, you can pick up a paintbrush and some paper and can Not to mention gender. gender. <laughs> yes, gender. Forget whatever. it if you were a woman back then. <laughs> exactly, which why during the Renaissance you just see any women artists whatsoever. Oh, no, 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 no. You know, because historians have, done, have gone back and researched there are literally thousands of artists who are, you know, they just faded away. They were created in their own, but because they were not in that uh, class structure, you know, they never got recognized. You know, as to where now, there is absolutely, there is no barrier whatsoever, really. If you truly want to create and you want, want to uh, promote yourself as an artist, you can do it. And it's even better than what it was 15, 20 years ago. I mean, Diane, yeah. we've talked about that quite often on these podcasts. You know, there is absolutely stopping you. And that's how come in my mind, I see this as a new renaissance, you know, for art. You know, it's a, it's, it's it's a, a brave new world. A very liberate, liberating, uh, you know, period, you know, now. And uh, you two got any more? You also have the freedom of of different types of art is acceptable. Like back in those days, only certain things were kind of acceptable as far, you know, they only said that this was certain thing was. Yeah. The rules the were the rules art. back then. Oh, <laughs> <they're cool. clears throat> if you did anything else, you, they, they wouldn't even speak to you. But <laughs> yeah. No. Now, yeah. For a long time, you better put fig leaves on everything. <laughs> <yeah>. <laughs> <laughs> if you noticed uh, in that video, it was the the uh, what was considered some of the artists. I think it was Holbein who was who was for first. Were yeah, uh, and then uh, after a certain time period, they went ahead and nudes, took the fig leaves off of everything. Yeah, nudes were starting to be you know uh, you know accepted you know, but it was it took a while. It was in the latter you know 16th century, you know, almost early 17th century before that began. <laughs> You know, to a certain point, and then they had to be in a certain way. They couldn't be, you know, as you know, erotic. I mean, they, you know, the, the classic yeah. pose, the lady stretched out on the on the divan, you know, type thing. And they were usually portrayed as goddesses, you know, whatnot, you know. So it it um, it oh yeah, it's, it's cha you know, changing the times, you know, whatever. And now, but. Like you said, Diane, uh, it's uh, yes, it's liberating now. But I think because of Duchamp, as we said in our last video, I think it's gone to an extreme. I was thinking the other day, you know, our our like our Jeff Coons and our Damien Hurst. Are we going to know about them two hundred years from now? Is their art going to last? What do you guys think about that? I'm sure they'll be in the history books. I'm sure they'll be in the history books. Especially There's a whole the period there where, like, from the 60s, I guess, or so, on through, I mean, even when I started college, um, realism was not the in type of art. <laughs> it was <laughs> it was more abstract stuff, and, you know, so there was a whole time there where people were experimenting and doing anything and everything besides the the traditional realism 
types of art. And so uh, a lot of different um, ideas have come out of that, which in some ways it's um, was liberating, but a lot of people can't, there was a pro, there was an issue with people relating to it. Like they they were so used to seeing realistic paintings and thinking that was the only type of thing that was art. So it was it was there was a whole it kind of divided everybody. Like you were either into all the abstract stuff or you weren't, and there wasn't any like in between. It was kind of a strange. Um, time as far as that kind of stuff goes and the, the, the and the art market itself they even came up with a new name like it used to be called if you did uh bigger paintings or landscapes it was called traditional art they even changed the word now they call it representational you know mm -hmm. they had to come up with a whole new phrase representational to distinguish from from uh you know abstract and and uh uh realism you know and but I truly believe I'm seeing a resurgence of representational if you if you read like I read a lot of uh, online news yeah, I've, I've noticed that too from, from yeah the, yeah from the uh, the art market it's 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 coming back you know yeah I think part of that is because the those guys pushed it so far to the extreme people were like how can you pay millions of dollars for, you know, a shark in a plastic tank? I mean, this doesn't, it just doesn't compute, you know, it's like. <laughs> I think if Jeff Koons has a, you know, basketballs in, a, in an aquarium, I mean. Yeah. I mean, I so what, yeah. <laughs> How do you keep that up? I mean, what do you do to maintain the basketballs in the shark, in the tank? I, I mean. <laughs> I mean, there has to be some sort of upkeep that you do to keep that <laughs> from getting gunky and nasty in there. <laughs> the guy paid, you know, a couple million dollars for it. I guess they'll let them figure that out. You know, they want to pay. <laughs> I probably have somebody that comes around and cleans that up. Yeah, with a lot of the experimental stuff, and even you see a lot of people using um, recycled materials now, which is kind of neat because they're using stuff that would otherwise be in the garbage somewhere but the lo longevity of those things you, you wonder if it's gonna last you know how because nobody really knows if the um, glues and stuff that you're using although they think they'll last a certain length of time they don't really know so some of the uh, uh, I've been reading you know I read different articles you know that uh, some of the museums and the galleries you know they've been complaining you know that attendance has been down well, it's because they had so much of this modern art, avant-garde art, you know. People have have quit, you know. They, they don't want to spend their money to go in and see that stuff. Not everybody does. I mean, there, there's, a, there's a market for that, but it's, very, it's turning out to be a very small market, you know. Which I think is another reason why representational art is starting to make a resurgence, you know, of and I love the abstract. I love to go see an abstract opening. I don't always make it to Tulsa to go see them, but I do like to go see them right now. Maybe when it cools off, they just had an abstract opening in a gallery and I didn't go because it's like 105 degrees outside in the heat index and it's like, yeah. I got 200,000 miles on my van and I just <laughs> I don't want to push it that far. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's been a very, very hot summer, you know. And yeah, so, I mean, when it comes I, off, I'd like to go to see something. Museums and galleries are even starting to almost uh, to attract, uh, you know, especially the younger crowd. They're turning them into almost like uh, like Disneyland, like attraction parks, you know. It was a guy, uh, oh, my mind just, his name Min, Min Wow or Min Min, it's a, Chinese name who has these these uh, displays with colored lights and you know and and everything and and it's it, and 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 a combination of you know electrical you know digital with lights and 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 uh, flashing you know art onto the walls you know and things and it's it's it, it's become more like a like kind of like a circus environment or a uh, amusement park environment, you know, and, and 
I mean, there's some pros and cons to it. Um, my daughters, you know, live over in Italy, put some pictures up on, on Facebook uh, up in Bologna this last uh, early part of the summer. They had on the buildings, they were projecting uh, art on the buildings, but these were your Renaissance paintings, which really look mm-hmm. spectacular. They just, they were beautiful, you know, the way they done, you know, done that. So, okay. That's, you know, that's, that's kind of nice. You know, when they were during an art festival, you know, they were, you know, so, so uh, there's some pros and cons. What are you guys' opinion, opinions on this? Am I just an old fogey or what? You know? <laughs> <laughs> well, I think, I think it, I mean, it's, um, it shows how much there, how much creativity there is out there and how many different ways people look at things and how, you know, one person likes a certain type of art and somebody else likes something different. And it all seems like it's, you know, acceptable by a certain number of people. And that's okay, you know, because it kind of, um, it gives you different ideas on how to look at things. And, you know, it's not, so you're not like always the same, but it's just a matter of taste, like which, you know, what your preferences are as opposed to somebody else. It's just your preference. It's not, right or wrong it's just you know different absolutely like, yeah don't i, I don't, we're listening and they hear me and they think i'm you know I, i'm kind of stuck in my way well that's me that's my thing. i that's, think that also having a show on the side of a building might be able to show people who might not otherwise go to a museum to see these pieces also they might get to see them and maybe interest them in actually getting into a museum and getting to see these pieces so that might be another side of it. Maybe that's why they're thinking that way of doing it. Because a lot of people may not get to go into a museum and actually see these pieces. So uh, that's another way of looking at it, to getting them interested maybe in to getting into a museum and seeing them. And some of these museums uh, charge a hefty price again. I know the, the uh, right here in Oklahoma City, the Oklahoma City Museum of Art. I think it's like uh, twelve bucks or fifteen bucks to to visit, and you know for some. Is it? I don't know. Yeah, yeah. I, I think that's what it is. About twelve to fifteen dollars if you're not a member. You know, and then you get a mem- an annual membership's like fifty dollars, and then of course you you, know, you get like a, yeah, it costs a lot to keep a museum up. So yeah, mm-hmm. but uh, you know, so you know, a lot of your average person, you know, who uh, uh, may be interested, but then they say, wait a minute, you know, I could go watch a movie for that price. <laughs> for, for less yeah, but, yeah. I mean, <laughs> but getting back to when I, when I say this is, th- these are good examples of why I think that this is a new renaissance, you know, for, you know, for artists is our, the, 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 um, the capability, the access to materials, the access to the market, it's there for us. So many times, you know, it used to be family members say, well, I want to be an artist. I said, well, that's not very, you're not going to make very much money doing that. You know, well, not necessarily. There's all different ways. Well, there's always a discussion with, um, amongst artists and people, I guess, in general, whether the artists from back in the Renaissance periods or older, you know, the traditional artists, if they would use like modern things like the computer or pick a photograph to paint from or, you know, any any of the things that we have available to, to us today that weren't available back then, would they use any of those things if they had them? And it always seems like everybody always says that they probably would because, you know, it just makes your job easier. And so why not? Yeah, but, I think they would. When, well, when they research, they research. Uh, uh, they were using much. the most modern things they could get their hands on back then. What would? Yeah. Why wouldn't they now? Absolutely. When they when they, and they invented stuff. Uh, the mm-hmm. the camera obs, obscura, right? You know, was very much uh, used by Caravaggio and uh, Leonardo da Vinci and even Michelangelo. You know. Yeah, I, uh, I hear that discussion, too. Some people say, well, no, they wouldn't use 
because well, you know, I don't think that's true. <laughs> I think they would. <laughs> you know, people, you know, they put down other artists, you know, who only like. I I read the discussions on YouTube, different videos, and I read like, oh my God, like I've been experimenting the our experiment quite a bit with uh, Kiara Squirrel and the uh, old master painting techniques, where they do the the under paintings and then they use a glazing. And I started, now I, I use a glazing and dry brush technique with my watercolor. So I wanted to do that with, with acrylics. So I started researching videos on YouTube. You've got your oil paint artists who say, nope, you cannot do effective glazing with acrylics. You got your acrylic <laughs> artist who said, yes, you can. Here's how you do it. And so you've got to this day, you've got those same arguments. So I'm sure that back in the Renaissance, they had the same argument amongst the artists, you know. Well, no, you can't do it this way. Well, I guess you can, you know, if you are careful and if you, you know. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Um, we got anything? It's about time to wrap up. We have anything else uh, we want to discuss? I hope, I hope our listeners are enjoying our our little bit of a thinking of. The, I guess I'm thinking of my. Like it must be, I must be getting old. I'm thinking of my legacy. <laughs> <laughs> I want to make. I don't sure know. That. I don't know who's getting my stuff. <laughs> I'm thinking about you know, I want my stuff to stick around for a while. You know, when, when I'm gone. You know, maybe of course it might get just dumped in the trash. The house is full. The studio is full. I guess we can all just fight over it. I don't care. Yeah, what's I'm going. Have a big fire. You know. <laughs> <laughs> I can throw it out in a pile in the yard and set it on fire for all I'm concerned. Yeah. So, any, anything else we want to talk about? Anything happening? happening in this? Well, what are you guys planning on working on this week? Yeah. What? Uh, what's our projects for this? Well, I've been making fun rings all week. I made 40 of them yesterday. I didn't make any today so far. <laughs> I'm getting ready for the October show. 40? You made 40 rings yesterday? 40 of those fun rings. Those little... Oh, just, I've decided to raise them up by a dollar. <laughs> I'm going to sell them for $14 instead of 13 Because everything's gone up except for the price of those rings. <laughs> the stones to go in them, the wire to make them with, the hotel... The cost of the shows during the thir 12 years that I've been making those rings, everything's gone up except for the price of those rings. So I decided to go up one dollar on the rings. So I hope that that's not going to stop anybody from buying them. <laughs> Otherwise, I'll have to drop it back down to 13. What about so. you, Diane? You got anything planned for this week? Um, I'm working on a bunch of um, small paintings right now. So that's on my agenda for the probably the next month or so. Um. <laughs> yeah. Well, in your case, small paintings too. But the way with your your process, I mean, it takes you a while to complete. Even a small one probably takes a little longer than. Normal, yeah. You know, yeah. To, complete, you know. to dry. Yeah, the layering and waiting for drying and. Yeah. So I have to work on several, especially the small ones. When I'm doing small ones, I can work on several. Because I have more space. I love <laughs> I several at a time. I, love I wish it would cool off here so I could go outside and do some painting. That would be nice. Yeah. It's gotten cool here the last couple of days. It's gotten oh, man. a lot more bearable. I'm pea, I'm pea green. <laughs> yeah, you know, it, it may cool. It's cooled down for a day and then it goes back up the next day around here. Uh, it was, I feel so bad for the hens. I swear I do. It'll cool down a little bit, but then it'll pop back up. It's still, I mean, you know, I'm waiting for fall. Between the ragweed and the mold, my sinuses are just. Oh, yeah. Allergies. Here, <laughs> for our listeners, if you're not familiar, Oklahoma is horrible with the allergies. And, and when I first moved down here, uh, my first Terrible. couple of years, I heard a lot of people talking about allergies. I said, what? It you never know, affected me, and then it hit me. And like, oh, <laughs> I thought Georgia was bad. Georgia's nothing. Yeah, every year it goes through, you know. You I know. need to move to the high desert. That's where I need to move. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> and the winds just carry, they just, they just carry that pot oh, yeah. falling around. It, it drives, just irritates, right? <laughs> mm -hmm. okay. I'll take double the amount of allergy medicine, and it's 
and it, that's the only thing that helps. Okay, we haven't done this in a while. A tip of the week. I'm going to offer the tip of the week. Yeah, I know. <laughs> My tip of the week is um, when I uh, use uh, uh, watercolors, and then when I purchase the uh, a little bit higher quality, a little more expensive paint, and was so pleased with it because I the brilliance of the colors and uh, it takes very little paint and it goes a long way. Well, I didn't do that much with acrylics because I wasn't getting as much bright colors. Recently, I came across a good deal. It higher quality acrylic, a set of higher quality acrylic paints for a very reasonable price. And I did a painting with that. And oh my God, I'm in love with acrylics now. I'm going to be doing a lot more acrylic paints because I've got that brilliance of colors there. So the tip of the week is invest in a little bit higher quality of paint. It's it's go, uh, higher quality materials. It it may be a, 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 a uh, high cost up front, but in the end, it is going to just improve your art and make creating art far more pleasurable. So, for you artists that are listening, invest in your higher quality material. It does pay off in the end. All right, that's it for this episode of the Artist Friends Podcast, episode 11, August 26th. I'm going to say bye to Constance and Diane. Thank you so much for joining me here. Bye-bye, everybody. Good night, everybody. <laughs> Good night, everybody. Bye-bye, folks. The Artist Friends Podcast is produced and edited by Clyde J. Kale. Participating artists, Diane Hunt and Constance Brosnan and Clyde J. Kale. You can find more information about Diane Hunt at www dianehuntstudio.com Constance Brownsan at www.etsy.com forward slash shop forward slash c-b-r-o-s-n-a-n-s Clyde J. Kale at www.cjkaleartworks.com If you'd like to participate or appear as a guest on the Artist Friends Podcast, please email cjkale at sign mystery-otr.com. That's cjkale at sign mystery-otr.com. This podcast is issued under the Creative Commons License 2019. Thank you for listening.